Who is that guy? Well, let's look to the sky as this month, starting tonight or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. We get the chance to track a rare green comet. So we got the, uh, the great Orbax from the Department of Physics at the University of Guelph back on the show, back on the couch to break this all down for us and, uh, I don't know, make sense of it. And I'll do what I can. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Help us look smart at our next dinner party <laughs> with the information exactly. that you provide to us. Okay, so... The name of this baby, it is a doozy. Yeah. Okay, so it is, okay, can I get, it? so it's C slash 2022E3ZTF. That's true. It was named for the great comet uh, uh, identifier uh, Emil C slash 2022E3ZTF. <laughs> now, it's, uh, the, these, these comets, actually, it seems like it's a kind of a funny name, but um, realistically, every one of those letters means something. So. Uh, there's two types of comets, ones that are within a 200 year periodicity, uh, ones that are over that. So the C just means that it's got longer than 200 year periodicity. And that's actually got an orbit of 50,000 years. So the last time anybody seen this comet was when Homo sapiens were replacing Neanderthals in the face of the Earth in the upper Paleolithic era. It's just been hanging out. Yeah, well, it's been going around through space to, to, during that time. 2022, it was found in 2022, E3. It was found in March of 2022, discovered. We happened to see it coming through its approach. Okay. Um, and so it's continuing that approach, which will end probably about the end of March itself in 2023. And uh, it was discovered by the Zwicky Transient Facility in California. So that's where ZTF comes okay, from. So um, we had this asteroid last week where it was yes. coming towards Earth, but it doesn't pose a threat. No. This doesn't pose a threat <laughs> no, on no, us. No, 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 no. So this, right? is, this will be close enough to see. This is the one last Last week that just got burned up in the atmosphere, right? I uh, know no, it continued along. So it? It, okay. it just it just followed the arc of gravity around Earth and then whipped right out the other side and went past us. Okay. Um, so that was close. And the great thing about about these asteroids is that we don't really have a lot of th threats from asteroids. Well, of course, I say that now. <laughs> <laughs> but this asteroid in absolutely no way poses a threat to us. Now, excuse saying that we can clip that when it actually <laughs> yeah, does yeah, happen. Yeah, exactly. Well, here was the great Orbax yeah. back on January 31st. Uh, but uh, this, the interesting thing about this one is, is, first of all, you know, no one alive on Earth now has ever seen this prior okay. to, well, I mean, they've seen it in the last year. Um, uh, and, and also that it's green. Uh, there, it's full of dicarbon and cyanogen molecules, which when they get close and experience the energy of our sun, a comet's just a big frozen ball of gas and rocks and dust. As that energy is absorbed, it all boils off, and the green color comes from the exposure of those chemicals to the sun. How big are we talking? How big is this? Big? Oh, it's a kilometer wide. A kilometer wide. Uh, and okay. the, the comet's tail will actually stretch out millions of kilometers away from the sun. Um, so you should be able to, as it approaches February 1st, 1020 p.m., it's going to be the closest to Earth that it will get. Um, you should be able to see a, a basically a green smudge. You might not be able to see a really refined tail uh, with the, the unaided eye. Um, and it, it, you'll, you'll actually be able to see that in a northern sky in the constellation Camelopardalis, the giraffe. Huh? <laughs> Pretty good, eh? <laughs> but high in the northern sky, basically. So Layman's take, terms, so take, where do you see this? Take where a look, look up in the north, <laughs> and you should be able to see a little bit of a green smudge there. Now, you've got about... Two or three weeks that you should still be able to see it with the Because it's just eye. going around. It's yep. just going around Earth. Yep. So it's just kind of, it's within our view for that period of time. And then come March, it'll be outside of our field of view uh, in North America in the evening. Don't need a telescope? We can just look up in the, you should be, the night Binoculars sky. would be ideal. If you okay. got binoculars, you're going to see it for sure. Okay. But you should be able to see it with the unaided eye. It needs to be clear, though. That's the thing. Ideally, yes. That's the the one down point of it not hurtling towards us through the atmosphere and going to destroy the planet. Right. Since it's not doing that, <laughs> we'll actually need to have nice, clear skies to be able to see it. But that, that's that's your job here. Yeah. Well, it's... <laughs> Clear skies, Brian. Got it. Got it. So, okay, but but you will have the chance for probably about, right. even with binoculars, probably about two, three weeks. Is this like a three in the morning type thing? Or is it like no, all, so, all, all night? Or? So 10, 20 in the evening okay. uh, on, the, on the first. It'll stay in the evening for the next few weeks. In all of January, it was best in the morning. And it'll kind of return to morning before it disappears in March. Okay, but starting tomorrow night, 10, 20, look up in the night 10, sky. 10, 20, take a look up to the north. And look for something green. Big green smudge. Big green smudge. <laughs> uh, are you guys doing anything with U of T for it? You guys kind of tracking it? No, keeping no, on, no. Keep, no. Keeping we're, an eye we're on just, it? We're just going out and spreading the word, letting people yeah. know it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see this brand-new comet that, cool. that no human being has ever seen before. Great Orbax. It's the green comet. It's tomorrow night, 10, 20, here all month. Thanks, buddy. No problem.